<laughs> Trans rights are human rights. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Um, and then you should be like, you're trans. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> this whole time you just throw stuff walk out yeah. up against a wall i know <laughs> All right. what's up everyone welcome to our channel or welcome back if you've been here before thank you so much for clicking on today's video well we're going to be doing a really cool june wrap-up where we have casey's dad here with us and he's going to tell you about the books that he also read in june so that's what you can expect from today's video as always, before we get started, don't forget there are tons of links in the description box below. Subscribing to our channel helps us out a ton and a like on the video goes a long way. Specifically in the description box is a link to our Discord where there are tons of reading friends there that you can come join and hang out with. They do Discord reading sprints, just all kinds of things. We would love to have you over there in the Discord. There's also a link to our Patreon, which is another way to support our channel and it truly goes a long way in helping us do what we do. All right, without further ado, we are here to talk about the books and that's what we're gonna do. This is gonna be our June wrap up. All right, I will kick us off with talking about the books that I read this June. I read more books than I've ever read in a single month this past month. Most of them I read on audio, so I'll be putting up on the screen. I am tasked with being very quick, so that's what I will do. Um, our first Patreon um, optional pick was The Good Girl Complex. This is a romance book that I chose. I gave it five stars, fell in love with Ellie Kennedy's writing. I will definitely be reading more of her books. Absolutely love this great romance, especially if you like um, like soap opera type writing. And then um, also gave this five stars. I read The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. This is an enemies to lovers uh, vacation trope romance book by Christina Lauren, amazing duo. Absolutely love this book. 10 out of 10. Definitely recommend it. See, I went fast. You did good. Now it's your turn. Okay. Well, to start off with, I want to talk about Robert Parker. <laughs> You're doing good. He's one of my uh, all-time favorite authors. Yes, he is. Compare him to Raymond Chandler. Mm -hmm. And the book I want to talk about is called Stone Throw. It's based in Paradise, where Jesse Stone is a sheriff. And there's all kinds of... Uh, heavy hitting, almost spiritual quotes in there that a person can Ooh, pick yeah. out. So it's one of the reasons I like Parker. Thank you. Perfect. You're welcome. You did great. You're such a philosopher. All right, babe. I use your one-liners all the time, actually. You're up. Okay, uh, so <laughs> um, to veer off course here, I have two Jack uh, Ketchum books. They're both horror. Um, this one, I think The Girl Next Door, I rated five stars. It's about the murder of Sylvia Likens, which um, is not for the faint of heart. It was a true, st this is based off of a true story of the torture and murder of a teenage girl um, by a uh, mother and her children and the neighborhood kids. It's a true, st it's based off a true story. And I really liked the way he, write it. he wrote it. Um, there's actually a lot of heart. I felt like he did a good job of respecting the people involved in it, whereas sometimes I think sometimes um, uh, authors can be exploitative and I don't feel like he did that. I think he gave her a good voice. And then the other one, I, I think I read, rated this one four stars. It's called Off Season. <laughs> and essentially it's about a writer and some of her friends who go stay in a cabin, um, which is surrounded by a group of feral cannibals. You said you gave it five stars? No, I gave it, <laughs> I gave it four. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, was right. Uh, don't, uh, the, neither of these are for people like, like these are for like hardcore horror fans. Don't read them unless you really enjoy horror. All right. Sorry to refer to the, my holy- Your almanac, my your holy <laughs> al al book almanac. Yes. All right, so the next two books I'm gonna talk about, I read both of the first Bridgerton novels. So the first one is called The Duke and I. We are hosting a read-along of this on a separate Discord channel uh, attached to ours. So if you would like to join the Bridgerton read-along, it's never too late to join. We're reading books three and four in July. So you could pick up there with us if you would like. All right, so the first book is called The Duke and I. Um, I absolutely love this book. I think I gave it five, I did give it five stars. I was very surprised by this novel. It is a Regency romance novel. I'm sure you've heard about it. There's a TV show based on it, which is also incredible, completely different take on the story entirely. But I absolutely love this. I was impressed with the writing. I was surprised that I loved this. I thought I was 
gonna hate it. I went in with very low expectations. Absolutely love this book. And then uh, to follow it up, the the Viscount Who Loved Me um, is book two, which I, I also absolutely loved. Gave it five stars. No, I gave this one 4.5 stars because I felt like it was a little bit slower, but this is Anthony's story and I uh, really love this. I really recommend the series. Really got me into Regency romance. It was funny. Both of them were hilarious and I'm just really glad that I have started reading the series and can't wait to finish them. So, yeah. Cool. All right, I want to talk about Inherit the Dead. It's a book by Lee Child, but he didn't really write it. He coordinated the efforts of 20 oh, yeah, different yeah. mystery writers really cool. that mm -hmm. starts the story and carries it all the way through. And each writer doesn't write a short story. They continue the story as it was set up to begin with mm -hmm. using their own styles. I'd, I'd give it a five star. It's, it's a pretty good book. That yeah, sounds is that, really interesting. Is that part of a series or is it just a standalone? It's just a standalone. As How far big as I is know. it? I want to read about that, that thick. <laughs> well, I couldn't see approximately your head, this your hand, big <laughs> when your hand blocked. Uh, so, like, how many pages? Uh, uh, Four hundred and eighty okay. or something like that. It's a, it's just, it's just I want to read this now. Yeah, it sounds even. I'm kind of interested in that, but I don't want to really like crime stuff. Anyways, um, I guess it's my turn. It is. I'm going to talk about two that I don't have with me. Um, one I was at E Read, and the other one was sold by our new book merchant over here. Um, Hango Books. Uh, first, uh, Stolen Tongues by Philip something. Blackwell, maybe. I uh, probably should know his name, but I'm too lazy to get my phone out to check. I think I rated it two stars. Um, the beginning of it was really good. The problem is, is he, he uses Native American folklore to tell a story, but he shows everything up front. So by the time you get to the middle or the end of the book, you've seen everything. There's no suspense. There's no reveal. Um, and then the one reveal he does have is really dumb, in my opinion. And then um, he does like a five page essay about why it's OK for him to write about Native Americans mm. at the end of it, which made the whole thing feel really uncomfortable because, um, you know, he there's like two he has three Native Americans that all play very minor supporting character roles. And it kind of seems like he's just patting himself on the back that he didn't make them like witch doctors or like that he didn't include like shamans or like Native American burial grounds. And and that just, um, that was really off-putting. I, I think it would have been kind of okay had he not put that in there. Anyways, so yeah, I don't know. It has a pretty decent rating, high rating on Goodreads if you're interested in it, but I... I even writing wise, it's just, um, you get everything up front, nothing surprising. Uh, second is Manhunt um, by, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Gretchen Felker Martin. Um, this is a book about trans people. Um, Ew. Yeah, I know. Um, and uh, so there's characters that are uh, trans men, trans uh, women, and non binary folks in the apocalypse. Um, and it was pretty good for the most part. I gave it four stars. Um, it, it, there was a little, it was a little crude for me at certain points, but that's just a personal feeling. I don't, I don't have an issue with uh, people writing about sex or being really open about sex. Um, but I just kind of was off put by those sections, mainly just for my own personal taste. Um, that being said, I think it says a lot of really good things about gender, um, not just for trans folk, but for everyone across the spectrum. And um, it's fairly interesting, and I think that she got review bombed by TERFs on Goodreads, and I think that this is worth a read if you can handle um, really graphic violence and um, kind of similar sex scenes. You like it? Perfect. <laughs> Trans rights are human rights. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Um... And then you should be like, you're trans? <laughs> Why didn't you tell me? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> this whole time you just throw stuff walk out yeah. up against a wall i know <laughs> all, right. all right so the next two i'm going to talk about i don't actually own because every month i get them from the library rather that's this month's going to be physical past month's been audio um, but i'm making my way through the women's murder club series so i read books seven and eight last month as well as a few more which i'll talk about in a few minutes but i loved both of them i gave them both five stars i don't have much to say about them there it's a long-standing detective fiction 
and um, it's very good. It's about a group of women who solve cases together. So one is like a district attorney, one is a medical examiner, one is a uh, detective, and one is a reporter. And so it's also about their lives and the drama that ensues amongst them and amongst their love interests and such. And that's really what I'm there for. I'm only partly there for the crime, but I, I do really enjoy the series. Um, How many of those have you read? I'm last on month? the ninth one. How I read many? three last okay. month, four last one. Four. Um, so yeah, I'm really enjoying the series and that's all I really have to say about it. If you like crime fiction, check it out. All righty, I want to talk a little bit about Stuart Woods, The Santa Fe Edge. Like all of his novels, it shows how the filthy, filthy, filthy rich people live way beyond anything I'd ever know. So I guess it's a nice fantasy. But uh, I mean, about every third or fourth chapter, he has a new lady. There's mm. some graphic sex stuff in it. And frequently threesomes with lady, lady guy. And I mean- Specifically, lady, they, lady guy. They deal, <laughs> they deal with, uh, I don't know, like one day he bought like two Is it because they're or all three. rich or something? Yeah, filthy rich. And they just like and do, the and they're just debaucherous? No, I mean, they're decent people. He, he's but an like, attorney and-, and I mean, like they, they like their, ex, their, their extracurricular activities are hedonistic. Yeah, and they drink so much in the book. I don't know how any of them are sober, really. But that's, uh, it, it's, a, it's a nice, light, kind of fancy, fantical read See? where a person can just sit down and say, oh, Gee, that's what it's like. Oh well. Yes. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> and most, of, I have read a lot of Stuart Woods, and almost all of his novels follow that. Wait, does anybody that die? Trend. Yeah, people die. People get killed. He's an attorney. His best buddy's Dino, uh, the uh, sergeant or no, the head detective, in New York Dino. City. Yeah, he moved up. Stone had been a police officer, the attorney, and got shot in the knee and got. <laughs> forced out disabled wise so he started a law career and that set the ball rolling on this whole deal it all goes downhill from is there this the, is this like a series or is this a book or? it's a, all his no it's not series like volume one volume two but it's a detective that's in all of them it, yeah it's just kind of the same storyline yeah all right so all right. get ready spend some money and buy some houses okie dokie i the next two i picked i think kind of go together i've said this i think if you like one you'll like the other um, one is Dead Silence. Um, it's the one I kept showing you guys that says help on the back. Um, and it's about uh, a crew that finds a um, abandoned cruise, like spaceship <laughs> in like the outer rim of space, like kind of the furthest vestiges that you can find. Um, the lead character is um, has mental illness um, where she does hallucinate. However, she's aware of these things, um, so she she kind of is cognizant that she she struggles with that. But um, when these people get on the ship, uh, stuff gets a little weird, and everybody starts kind of hallucinating. So then you got to figure out what's happening. That was also a Patreon optional pick, and I think our patrons really enjoyed that. Except too. for Elliot. Except for Elliot, he really hated it, and that's yeah. okay because I really hated um, Outlawed, which I DNF'd, and it's not part of this um, video. <laughs> Uh, moving on. Um, so similarly, um, in space, but it's like kind of on a, I don't know if it's like an asteroid or another planet. Um, it probably says, and I might have missed it, but it's called The Luminous Dead. It's about a cave, um, a spelunker who is doing her first mission solo in this expansive um, cave system. Um, and is guided by one other person in like a computer room, like that's sitting on the top of the land. So it, it kind of deals with isolation and um, it's a very dangerous job. What she's doing is very dangerous. And she's trying to help this person who's in the computer room kind of figure out some things. Um, but yeah, it's very good. And for, I, I originally gave it four stars, but I was thinking about it, you know, I was held captive by a book that only has two characters in it the entire True. time. Yeah. And and I still think about that book. So I raised my star rating to five. It did, uh, Dead Space is also very, very much five. And they both end um, in ways that I really uh, think are surprising. So. A little bit. 
All right, so the next two books I'm gonna talk about, uh, funny enough, I actually read books five and six. Last time I spoke, I talked about books seven and eight because they were out of order in my journal because of the way I, I rated them. Five and six gave four stars, didn't like them as much as seven and eight. I am referring to the Women's Murder Club series. Are oh. you still talking about them? Yeah, so I did read four last month. Um, seven and eight better than five and six. Not worth me talking about other than to tell you that I read them because you won't have a clue what I'm saying unless you've read them. Um, yeah, I just continue on with the series and everything I said last time about them, so your turn. Okay, I want to mention briefly The Recovery Agent by Janet. I don't know exactly. Ivanovich. Yeah, Ivanovich. Yeah. Uh, she's one of the few writers that can make me laugh out loud. That's true. Um, she has some main characters, Stephanie Plum, mm -hmm. um, Dino. No, I'm sorry. Dino is from another <laughs> From series. the one you were just talking about. Uh, yeah. Ranger and Joe Morale. Joe took her virginity way back in okay, high school. Okay, we're, no, that's but not anyway, the, <laughs> in here. Yes, it is. It's fine. <laughs> well, I mean, it's just part of the, the story. Yeah, She's, it's uh, Stephanie Plum is a recovery agent for her crazy uncle, Vinny, who owns a Bonds office. Isn't this like Book a Million? Book a Million. Of the series, of the Stephanie Plum series? Well, no, the Stephanie Plum series is specific to her and Lula and Joe Morelli. I mean, some well, of the same characters. she's in this, right? Yeah, the same characters. Okay. Some of the same characters, yeah. Sorry. But Different series, in this though, one, series. she introduces these guys that can poof in and poof out without <laughs> opening the door. <laughs> They're magic? Uh, yeah, a little, little bit of realism. stuff like that. A couple of cousins, and they are also in pursuit of uh something that's been taken and and stephanie plum is too so it's a good read if i didn't read the original stephanie plum series could i still read this oh yeah i wouldn't need to read the original series no you don't need to it it stands alone okay all right Hang on. and Pause. you get enough explanation in the story to un to get a little bit of the history to set the baseline for the story as well okay all right babe you're up that's it but when you say poof like they actually poof yeah 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 we were talking we had a conversation about this the other morning while you were asleep okay my next two books are also horror because that's pretty much only what i like to read sometimes in the summer when i'm not in school um i'll do this one first uh the ritual by adam neville don't watch the netflix movie it's bad but this book is not bad i rated it four stars probably gonna stick on that um it has to do with some stuff towards the end that i got um not irritated about, but he, he goes into something very specific that I know quite a bit about, and um, it felt a little exploitative of a particular um, fandom. I don't know how to explain it unless you were to read what I'm trying to say, but I can't say it because then it would be a spoiler. So, But otherwise, it's really nice. I really like kind of more... Um, uh, like nature driven horror or like uh, in America I really like when like Wendigos for instance are in stories um, or maybe some some sort of like um, if it has to do with like European like colonization kind of more like the witchcraft aspect of it and this deals with like um, kind of more pagan um, stuff going on and I believe Sweden um, I think Norway somewhere around there um, but yeah and then the next book I have, which was very surprising and maybe one of my favorite books uh, that I read last month, is My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. Grady Hendrix has probably become one of my new favorite authors. Um, I really like him probably almost as much as I like Stephen Graham Jones. This book just follows uh, <laughs> a set of friends. One of them uh, got possessed. Um, but it's actually supremely heartwarming, um, very detailed in its character explanation and it does a really good job painting a beautiful friendship between these two women so uh, fantastic all right um the next two books i want to talk about i the rest i don't have physical copies of so they'll just be on the screen but i did read a fa i think is how you say it, a fa love story which is a ya contemporary story enemies to lovers about two kids who grow up with opposing vietnamese restaurants and um oh. they are or foe Actually, they say it differently in the book. I listened to it on audio. Oh. 
Um, yeah, one of the two, but they, they, the, there's a Vietnamese speaker who does it, but um, I could be wrong. I don't know. Anywho, um, it, it's about opposing restaurants and these two kids who, at the very beginning of the story, they meet each other and really like each other, but it's very complicated because their families hate each other. It is a Romeo and Juliet retelling. Um, this book has tons of mixed reviews. I don't like YA Contemporary very much, and I really enjoyed it on audio. If I had been reading it, I probably wouldn't have liked it as much, but I worked in a restaurant for a long time. So I loved that aspect of the book and learning about the Vietnamese culture. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars, four and a half stars, somewhere around there. Um, and then the other one was A House Across the Street, which I have a dedicated video to. If you want to check that out, it will be somewhere on our page, but I DNF'd it um, at like 120 pages in. Riley Sager is not for me. As I said in the video, we are never, ever, ever getting back together. And that's all I have to say about Riley Sager. So yeah, he sucks. Your turn. Okay. I want to come back to Robert Parker again. Unfortunately, he passed away. Mm. Uh, so there are some ghost writers that the family approved to continue his writing. And this one's by, it's Robert Parker, but it's by Ace Atkins. And it's called the Santa Fe Edge. And uh, we learn all kinds of really neat things from this book, like youth is wasted on the young, mm. time wasted me, or I wasted time and now time's wasting me. And that's as helpful as a fish on a bicycle. Things like that, <laughs> that he plugs in to the, to the writing. It's a great story. It involves the FBI, <laughs> uh, uh, the CIA is probably in there too. Some of the main characters uh, are uh, strong. They're steady in every story that they write about. They're consistent. And it's a good read. I would rate it a five star mm, nice. out of five. Out of five. <laughs> five, out of five. Nice. <laughs> Not five out of seven. You are probably pretty uncomfortable, aren't you? Um, so to finish up here with mine, I read Fevered Star. This is the second book in the Black Sun series. All I will say, because I don't want to spoil anything, is this book made me rethink about my original rating of Black Sun, which was four stars, and push it up to five. I really, really like um, Roan um, Roan House's uh, ability to. She really kind of explored things that I was excited for her to explore. I know a lot of people are really irritated with this book um, because people don't like the journey aspect of it, or they don't like that maybe particular characters aren't as focused on. However, she, she happened to focus on my favorite one. Um, while also, I think, exploring the characters in a more intimate and detailed way. So I really enjoyed it, and it made me re uh, rethink the series. Um, and then I will close out with these two books, which are, um, I think it's just a duology, because it really feels like the last, the, the, this one here is an end, but it's The Unspoken Name and The Thousand Eyes. I can't remember the name of the series. Um, these are really fun books. I originally read this... Uh, and DNF'd it, and we almost sold it. Well, I didn't DNF it. I said I was going to come back to it, and then... Um, we did put it in the cell pile, though, and I had to go get it out of the no, cell pile. Well, well, yeah, the donate, it was in a donate pile, yeah. but yeah, it was... Um, anyways, I um, got it back out, and I read it, and I was like, what was I thinking originally? And I think what happened was that I'd read too much Brandon Sanderson in a row, and then picked up another fantasy, and I was just tired of it. Um... So I, I've, these are both five stars for me. It's about, uh, it's, I don't even know how to explain what this sapphic. is about. It is sapphic. It, um, sapphic fantasy. Yeah, it's sapphic fantasy, but it's essentially like about uh, a person who gets saved from essentially being a religious sacrifice and her growth into kind of like a vigilante sort of sorts. And then um, exploring that and other people that she meets. So. All right, and to close out the video, the last two that I read was NYPD Red 2 and NYPD Red 3. You Everything... only read James Patterson. That is not true. I don't only read James. It's just a new thing that I'm how many, trying to explore. How many James explore. Patterson books did you read last month? It doesn't matter. I'm just trying to explore these series. And I understand it's, serial reading. Yeah, it's just I listen to them in audio and I do other things. Like I, that's They're literally just purely background enjoyment while I'm doing journaling and other things. Look at... Um, Love I know. grandpa over she's, here. She's, she's, yep, yeah, she's all about some grandpa. Um, but yeah, I, I'm enjoying them. I, as far as the Women's Murder Club and NYPD Red Go, I don't recommend the series. I wouldn't recommend them to people. I enjoy them. He enjoys them. But most people probably would not enjoy them. My friend Neve enjoys them. We're kind of making our way through them together. But the general population do not recommend. Um, so yeah, 
we've made it to the end of the video. So if you made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching the entire thing. Um, we love you guys. A very special thank you to our patrons and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Bye.